Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing my October wrap up. So all the books that I read in October, I tried to read. Dale's here sitting next to me. Dun, dun. <laughs> um, so it's just all the books that I read in October. And I tried to read a few like spooky, creepy books just to stay in, I guess like in theme. And I did read a couple that are very like racy. I would not, um, parents, I would not allow your kids to read them. Not until they're mature enough. For sure not elementary and middle school kids, no. High school maybe, if they're mature enough. So let me just start, let me show you guys. Let me show you all the books that I read. Oh, I have them here. So I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I read eight books that I completed and I was also reading, I feel like it's super dark. I was also reading a ninth book, but I never finished it because I didn't really get into it. So I bought um, what, Haunting of Hill House and I thought it was gonna be like the show, like at least similar to the show. I knew it wasn't the same because I had already read stuff that said that it's not the same, but I thought it was gonna be similar and it, it ended up being similar or almost exactly the same as the movie A Haunting where Catherine Zeta-Jones comes out. And since I've already seen that movie a ton of times, like, I don't know, like the book, I think I got up to a page like 150. I was kind of like halfway and I didn't finish it. And I don't think I'm gonna finish it. I'm just gonna move on to another book. <laughs> but anyways, let's start with the first book that I read. You know what, let me put them in order just so I already have them. And I pretty much loved all the books that I read. <laughs> So the first one I read this month is Push by Sapphire and basically it's um, the movie Precious. This is the first book that I have to say don't let like your kids read it. It is extremely explicit. Um, so basically like it's about this girl named Precious Jones and she doesn't really know how to read, right? She's super low academically. Her mom abuses her like physically, sexually, mentally, everything. Her dad like sexually abuses her often to the point where she has children with him. It's extremely, extremely graphic. It honestly made me feel uncomfortable. Like the book made me uncomfortable, but it was good. Like I wanted to keep reading it. I wanted her to have a happy ending. So yeah, I would give this book like a three and a half stars. So like three and a half out of five. Um, I did like it. I did finish it. I enjoyed it. But like I said, it is not for kids. Caution if you're going to read it as well because it's uncomfortable for adults too. Thank you, Dale. Next book, there, next book I read this month is... Symptoms of Being a Human. This book I really enjoyed. I started reading it when we went on a road trip to, where did we go? I think Houston. I took it with me. I put it on Instagram and I felt so cool because the author liked my post, like the author of the book. He liked my Instagram post. Anyways, back to reality. Um, so basically this book is about, oh no, it's all bent. So basically it's about a girl named Riley. It doesn't straight up tell you she's a girl in the very beginning, but she's going through like, um, what's the word? She's not like transgender, gender fluid. Gender fluid's the word they use. So let's say some days she feels like a girl, some days she feels like a boy. And it's just... A battle in her head because even she doesn't know what she is she she fights with herself mentally always and then she also has to deal with all these problems going on around her outside of her head for example school bullying and stuff like that 
So it's basically just this person that's discovering who they are and I really enjoyed it. I, there were parts where I was so mad because people would bully her but she ends up standing up for herself at the end and she kind of figures out how to deal with who she is, like how to be comfortable with herself. So this is a really good book. This one is a four stars for sure, like four. Like I loved it, I really enjoyed this book. <clears throat> and that one I would say it's maybe like, um, I guess middle school kids can read it. I feel like kids should read books like that, especially because they themselves can be going through something like that. Like they're barely starting to discover who they are. So I don't see why they wouldn't be able to read that book. Next I read Rules of Magic. So my first kind of like October book. So this is basically like a prequel to Practical Magic. It's about witches in case you all don't know. Um, I love Practical Magic. It's about Jillian and Sally and their journey. But this one is about their aunts and Jet and Aunt Franny. And you basically just start off from when they're kids. And in this book, they actually have a brother. And you find out what happens to them throughout their lives. Um, if you've seen Practical Magic, you know that they can't fall in love because it's like a curse. And basically here you find out what happened. How did that curse start? How did they deal with it? It's super pretty. I really enjoyed this book. Um, and at the end, you see some familiar people as well that you see in Practical Magic. Um, this one I would also give a four star. I really, really, really enjoyed it. But I already loved Practical Magic before that, so next. Thank you, Theo. Next, I read The Tequila Worm. This one I chose because a friend of mine from school actually recommended it, and even a student. One of my students was super into it, and he would always like he saw me reading it and he's like oh miss that book is so good i think he was like ahead of me at one point but i caught up <laughs> um but yeah so this book's really good especially if you're from hispanic heritage and the girl or the woman that wrote this book actually lived about 45 minutes from where i live so a lot of the places that she talks about i'm familiar with and i think that's why i enjoyed it more and also because of the culture so our cultures are the same so i know what she's talking about in a lot of the stuff so i just make that connection with the book and it's super well written it's there are some parts that were hilarious like i would laugh and my students were like miss why are you laughing they thought i was a freak um but yeah like you can totally relate to this book this book is just it's precious like you can read it to your kids it's really nice i totally recommend this book this one I would give like a 4.5 just because I felt so closely connected to it um, and I feel it's just a nice book to make you feel happy. Obviously there's a sad part but <clears throat> most of the book is just so, I don't know, like relatable and it's really good and it's a super quick read. Look, it's super thin. Next I read Heroin by Mindy McGuinness. All right, I'll put a list um, down below of like the books and the authors, just in case you guys wanna search for them. And then I think all my books, yeah, all my books I bought them on Amazon, so that's why I find the cheaper prices. <coughs> and this one is a little bit thicker, but I went through it so fast. I hear you, I'll be right back. Okay, so we have a new little guest with us. Gio's awake from his nap. So he's a little bit groggy and fussy. So heroin is basically about this softball player, softball player, softball player in her senior year of school. And she actually gets into a car crash. And they give her narcotics like for the pain and whatnot. And she actually becomes addicted to the pain meds and eventually she becomes addicted to heroin so it's basically just her journey into addiction and then 
her life is basically just spiraling. It starts spiraling really fast because this all happens within her senior year. And I'm pretty sure it started, it didn't start like at the very beginning of her senior year. So I really enjoy books like these, especially because I love like all the Ellen Hopkins books and like Crank and all those. So this one was really um, similar. I read it super quick. I took the dust jacket off just because I took it to school and I didn't want the kids to see. So it's just black, <laughs> except I didn't know that it had that little gloss. And I had one student that did see it and she was like, Miss, what's that book about? And I was just like, oh, it's not for you. <laughs> but yeah, like, so I would say just be kind of cautious with this book just because it is about drugs. And I know like a lot of parents don't really like for the kids to read these kinds of books. But um, if your child's mature enough, I don't see why not. It could be a cautionary tale for them as well. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I went through it super fast. I felt so bad for Mickey. I think her name is Mickey. I think you would pronounce it as Mickey, not as Mikey. Um, there were some parts that were so sad, like the way the author described what was happening to her and everything. Like, honestly, like I, I wondered like why do people even start doing those drugs in the first place? Like, there's no need for you to do it. And it destroyed her life, basically. But, um, so this book, really good as well. 3.5 to 4 stars, I would say. Um, I liked it, but I didn't think it was like, oh my god, so life-changing and amazing. But I did enjoy it. It was a super fast read, and I would definitely reread it. Next, I read this one. So this one was... A little walk down memory lane I actually have the box collection so I have all three books in a little box set but I only read the first one scary stories to tell in the dark by Alvin Schwartz so this one I just read because I remember reading these when I was little and I totally remember it being much longer but I think I read it like in an hour hour and a half um so like for example this one's like one of my favorites and i feel like when i was little i was way more scared of these stories than i was reading it now but this is always like a super cute read not cute but like fun read especially for us older people because it reminds us of our childhood i'm pretty sure everyone read these stories when they were little um but yeah so this one it's just a little collection of ghost stories some of them are funny they have like a little funny twist to them but yeah i mostly read this one just for fun and it was fun remembering like as i was reading it i remembered the stories this one's creepy this one was a creepy one is he no i get scared next this month i was actually super into graphic novels my first graphic novel that i read oh someone's getting sick the first graphic novel that i read was speak and that one was last month and um i got two more graphic novels this month and actually read them graphic novels are super quick reads so the next book that i read was blue is the warmest color this is one of those other super explicit books that are not for kids do not like do not let your kids see this graphic novel because it has pictures so that's just a um warning don't read this around your kids um don't let your kids read it it's not for young children it this is for adults so i kind of already knew what to expect from this book because i love the movie it's on netflix it's like a french it's in french um but i like seeing foreign movies so i already knew what it was about so basically it's about this girl that she figures out that she likes girls when she meets um emma which is the girl with the blue hair and she's just kind of discovering herself her name in the book is different in the book her name's clementine and in the movie her name is 
It's Emma and I forgot her name in the movie. But her name's different in the movie and um so the other girl, Clementine, she's kind of like discovering herself. Um but she's in denial throughout her whole life. But she knows that she does love like I loved it because it's it's a love story. I felt it in my heart. I cried just like I cried in the movie. I cried in the graphic novel. The pictures are beautiful. They're so stunning. And I love that in the book, her hair and her eyes, because her eyes are also beautiful blue. It's the only color in the book, which I feel it kind of makes like sense. Like she brings color to Clementine's life. And the only color in the book is basically that. Also in the beginning, when, I don't want to say it because it's different than in the movie, but the beginning when she's talking to Clementine's parents, there's a little bit of color. But the only color you basically see is just her hair. See, like this whole page is black and white and just her hair is blue. But yeah, super graphic, graphic novel. Don't recommend for kids, but if you like graphic novels, if you like foreign films, foreign stuff, this is a good one for you. And the last, it's, um, I forgot to say, it, the, it was played in the Cannes, Cannes Film Festival. And I think it got a lot of awards. The last book that I read was Coraline. I love the movie. The movie is one of my favorite movies ever. I can watch it over and over. So I bought the graphic novel, graphic novel, and it's so nice. I have to say it is extremely creepy. Let me show you guys. For instance, the other mother is the creepiest thing you've ever seen. Like, look at the other mother. She's right here. Look at that face. It's so creepy. I'm creepy what is that she's so scary i feel she's much scarier in the graphic novel than she is in the movie um but yeah so Coraline's basically a book about this little girl named Coraline jones and her and her family move into this apartment and when they're there she finds a door on the wall and it's bricked like it had, it's bricked up but one day she actually goes through it and when she goes through it she goes to basically it's like the mirror world so she has like another mother another father everything that she has in her regular life she has it in the other world but it turns out that the other mother is basically a monster and the difference between her real family and the other one is that they all have button eyes <laughs> That's so freaking creepy. That's the other mother. And she basically wants to just keep Coraline there in that world because I think she wants to eat her soul or something like that. And it's just like Coraline trying to find a way to outsmart her and escape. And it's super nice. And it's super similar to the movie. The movie did such a good job sticking to the book. There are a little bit of parts that are different, but for the most part, it's exactly like it. And um, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Both of the graphic novels. Blue is the warmest color. I totally give it a five stars. 4.5 Coraline. I, I think graphic novels are my new favorite thing. If you guys have any graphic novels that you recommend or any books that you recommend, let me know down below in the comments. And that is all I read in October. <laughs> That's all I read in October. So I'll see you guys next month for my November wrap up. Don't forget to subscribe down below. And that's it. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Tiago, <laughs> stop. Bye.